What's up, everybody? It's Chris from Profoto, and this is Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting techniques, gear, uh, photography in general, any questions that you may have, hopefully more or so pertaining to lighting. We try to answer that here and have a good time in the, while we're doing it. If you're watching this on Profoto.com, you're going to see some stuff pop up around the edges. If you want some more information, you can click on those things. If you don't, whatever. If you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, you're not going to get that. If you want it, go to Profoto.com. If you don't care, stay here with us and we're going to rock out. So today we're going to dive into two really simple one light headshot lighting setups. Uh, this is mostly for anybody who is maybe new to lighting and looking for a, a cool lighting setup that's relatively simple uh, for your headshot photography, or if you have been shooting some headshots and you're just looking to simplify your setup or want to add a look to your arsenal, this, these I think are pretty easy uh, with minimal equipment needed to do them. Obviously, lighting source-wise is one light. So with that being said, let's jump right into taking some pictures. It's not super heavy on the technical side. It's just photographing today. So that's what we're gonna jump into. So today, let's jump into one of my favorites. So it's essentially creating a window light. I'm gonna roll this in here. So we're using a, this is a three foot by four foot um, RFI Octabox. Oh yeah, yeah, they're gonna have to probably go this, the side shot. Cause I'm gonna put, cause I'm gonna put, cause I'm gonna put this in place. So this is a three foot by four foot uh, RFI Octabox. Uh, and I have it turned to where the long side is horizontal. Uh, so it is four foot this way, three foot this way. I'm gonna stand in front of it and I'm gonna photograph Kate straight on. The cool thing about this is it's gonna, the, the whole point of a square softbox, first and foremost, is to mimic window light. So this is gonna give a really cool window light feel. Uh, I see it a lot of people, uh, a lot of headshot photographers in LA uh, shoot with the style where they're always in front of the window, but what if, you know, you're in a place where you don't have a ton of sun or you wanna shoot when the sun's not out? You can use this setup looks the exact same and it looks really, really awesome. And again, it's really simple. It's a three foot by four foot soft box with a B10 on the other side of it. So really easy stuff. So we're gonna have Kate come in here and we're gonna shoot this look. I like to boom it up a little bit higher. So I like it to be, so I'm gonna stand in front of this thing. So I like it to be a touch higher. That way for the most part, it'll wrap all the way around my head. Um, for this, a lot of the times I'll use my four by six softbox, but this is just to show you, you don't have to have that big of a softbox to get this look. It looks really, really good with a three by four. Uh, I just, I'm addicted to my four by six softbox, so I use it a lot. You ready for me? Yeah, I'm ready for you. All right, here I come. So again, this is an RFI three by four for people wondering. Uh, it is using an RFI speed ring, not an OCF speed ring. Make sure you buy the right speed ring if you get one. Uh, and then I'm shooting with my GFX 100S and to capture one. So also I need to change out this trigger for the correct. Since I have two lighting setups, I'm on two different channels. And just to make it easier, I'm just gonna switch between my two, two setups here. I actually feel like I'm a little far forward for where I was earlier. So let's. I don't know, I'm on my, I'm on my line. Perfect. I found my line. So here we go. So again, just a headshot. It's gonna be, you know, I'm shooting this one vertical. Some people like to shoot horizontal. I also like to shoot them horizontal, but for the sake of this, we're going vertical uh, into a portrait mode. And then here we go. So three, two, one. Oh, and my trigger's not on. How embarrassing. Details. How embarrassing. Here we go. Three, two, one. Lovely. Could you stand up a little bit taller? There we go. Chin down a little bit. Three, two, one. Lovely. So again, it is this really beautiful wrapping light, as you can see inside the shot right there. It's a really natural feeling shot. The cool thing is, is the light is far enough away from Kate in the background that the, the fall off is hitting the background nice and even. It's kind of giving us this cool, like, warm gray, almost uh, kind of like a beigey tone maybe. And it just also could be because my backdrop is is old and it's probably, it's probably wearing, yeah. but it's, it gives this really nice look and feel. The soft box does a good job of lighting from the top, also filling from the bottom. So it's just this kind of this wall of light. 
That's a really, really awesome setup. This is one of my favorite headshot lighting setups. Um, I kind of ran across it when I forgot a certain speed ring on a shoot for a, a big corporate headshot gig, but I did have my four by six. So I just set my four by six up and I shot it all window light and it was really awesome. And ever since then, I've loved it. So that's the first setup. Let's talk about the second setup. While he's doing that. Yeah, oh, see if we have any questions. I see waves. Hey everybody. Um, has the light been mirrored? No, I used um, I used TTL to set my exposure. So someone was asking, was the light metered? And we can actually, if people have questions too, we can pop them up on the screen. But um, uh, has the light been metered? No, I did not meter the light. Uh, I simply used TTL to uh, set my exposure, and then from there I just finessed it. It. And honestly, I didn't even finesse it because the TTL nailed the exposure. That that light that you see in that shot, that's the TTL exposure right out of the camera. So next setup is a fun one. It's with a beauty dish. And then I'm also going to show you a variation of it with um, a softbox, just so in case you don't have a beauty dish, you see how it looks with a softbox. Uh, but this is something I really, really like. You don't have to do the boom arm or you can do it with grip arms. I just have it. I, I'm just apparently being extra today. So I've, I've done extra things. Today, so yeah, just today, just today, extra. just today, I'm extra. I'm never extra ever, any other time. So essentially all I've done is I put a grip arm uh, with a super clamp here just to hold a reflector so I can roll in and out in, in one piece uh, and then boomed uh, a OCF white beauty dish uh, over the reflector. So we should get some bounce up from the reflector should look really, really nice. The cool thing about doing this with a beauty dish is that you can get, uh, you'll get sometimes stray light from this. Uh, you should, probably not so much now, but normally if I was back a little bit, some of this stray light would hit this reflector and bounce up a little more intense. So I might wanna flip this over to the white side. Uh, but this is just our small reflector, uh, silver white. So it's silver on this side, white on this side. And then I just wanna look at one thing before we do this. Yeah, I think we're in good shape. Come down just a hair, there we go. And so the cool thing about this setup is you could position it dead on if you want to. So if you want it to be more of like a, a butterfly clamshell st style light, or you could kind of kick it out to the side, uh, more of a loop light, just depending on what you're looking for. Um, and I'll show you both of those and then I'll show you the variations with the softbox, which would be cool. So, so let's get this set up right here. So here we go. Oh, and then I gotta do the thing where I change out the remote. Yeah, I'm a smart guy, smart guy. Cool, we're good there. So here we go. Three, two, one. So very cool. So the nice thing about a beauty dish is beauty dishes have kind of like this really cool snap. They are, um, they just have a little more punch to them than a normal softbox does. And that's just inherent from the way that the light hits that deflector plate kind of wraps around. It's not the biggest modifier in the world. so. Again, it just has like this cool snap to it that soft boxes don't have. And then the cool thing about this setup again is, so like if I wanted to straighten this out a little bit more, I could kind of just roll it over and, and flatten it out. Let's see, I'm gonna, I have this little point right here of the, the beauty dish hitting in the frame. So I'm just gonna try to kick it out of there a little bit without having to rate, there we go, it's perfect. So now I can put it more directly overhead to get rid of some more of those shadows, minimize those out. So three, two, one. So that's gonna minimize out some of the shadows over on the side shot. You'll see it pop up here in a second. It's gonna to start to even out a little more. Looks really, really nice, right? So you can move this in and out. And then if you wanted a little more drama or a little more direction, maybe you uh, maybe you had somebody who wants, you know, you're trying to, they have maybe a wider face like me and you're trying to thin it out. You can go this route right here where we kick it out a little bit more to the side and do it more of a loop light style. So here we go. Three, two, one. And now you're starting to add a little bit more shadow in there, a little bit more dimension. So again, it's a really easy way to, um, honestly, I probably need a re-meter for that one. Let's do that. Here we go. Three, two, one. Maybe it's kicked off a little bit too much, too much to the side for that one. But again, you can kind of play with it and get it the way that you like it. So with that being said, let's, instead of going with the beauty dish, let's see what the same setup would look like with a softbox. So again, really, really easy setup stuff. One light, which is nice. 
Um, and then with everything on like a rolling stand, you can kind of just play with it and put it wherever you want. So rolling stands are at least my best friend. Hi everybody, let's see. Um, how is your reflector attached? Yeah, so my reflector is, uh, I've got a grip arm on a super clamp. So I, let's see, let's see if you can see this. So it's just, um, it's not the best thing, it's not the best way of doing it in the entire world, but uh, I, have a, I have a reflector holder, uh, but it was just being wonky today. So I went, I went this route. It was driving me nuts, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. So it's so a, a grip, a super clamp, clamp to the pole of the uh, light stand into a grip head holding a grip arm. And then I just take a, an alligator clip and I just throw this on here and then I alligator clamp it. Um, and then also Mike is asking, where is your flash located specifically on the first setup that you did? So on so the first setup, the flash is, oh, come on, alligator clamp. Um, the first uh, shot, the, <laughs> the, min the minute I take anything apart. So on the first shot, uh, on this one, let's go up here, right there. So on that shot right there, the light is directly behind me. So it's it's literally, oh, I'm gonna hit my reflector again. I'm just winning this it's reflector, good. the it's reflector good. wars. So it's it's right behind me. So if you kind of looked at the size of it, like it's it kind of cuts off here. So the bottom of the the bottom of the soft box kind of hits me at shoulder height. So it's still wrapping around my large melon head. Um, oh, you trying to bring it out to show? Yeah. So here, yeah, that's probably not a bad move here. So just so you can kind of see it straight on. So I was roughly photographing like this, directly in front of it. So all of this light is gonna wrap forward. Really, really cool. All this light over the top is gonna wrap forward. And for the most part, I'm blocking a minimal portion of the modifier. It's still nice, big, and soft, and it's kind of throwing light everywhere. So that's where I stand, like right in front of it. Three by four is probably the smallest I would go standing in front of it. Um, but it still does a really good job of wrapping. So that's why I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and Caitlin's trying to take the whole studio yeah, down. Cool. You can see everything's uh, shaking. Uh, nice. Cool. So now we have this set up with the three foot Octa. Hi everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us. I kicked that down too much. So we're going to do this with the Octa. The cool thing about this is Bigger modifier, soft light, should look really, really cool. You wanna jump in here, Kate? I would love to. I would love to. I've been dying to. I've been dying to jump right up in here. here we cool. Go. <laughs> I ain't taking you anywhere anymore. Can't take her anywhere, nice. Here we go, cool. So again, nice thing about the, the Okta, a little bit more fill, a little bit softer than the um, Beauty Dish. I have a little bit of it creeping into the corner of the shot, but that's fine because we're shooting on a solid backdrop. So it's relatively easy to photograph that out. Here we go. Three, two, one. So with the soft box, it looks really good. It's not quite as, um, it's not quite as punchy as the beauty dish, but still really nice coverage. The cool thing about the soft box is it's going to also throw light a lot more evenly towards the background. So we're getting a relatively consistent background Whereas the, the beauty dish kid, depending on how the stray light is coming out from around the deflector, could uh, have variations in the background. And then again, this this is no different. So you could take this light source. It's bigger light source, so I'm gonna have to probably boom it up just a touch more for this. So you could go up a little bit more. Let's get this out of the frame. There we go. So again, so if you wanted to go with more of a butterfly style light, you could easily do this. Three, two, one. Looks really, really nice. Again, an, two easy one light headshot setups that look really, really good, however you want. The cool thing about um, going with this route is that your lighting setup has a little bit more shape and dimension, whereas something like the, uh, the wall of light, so standing in front of the single softbox, is going to have, it's gonna be much more flat, but it's still really flattering, so. And then you could also do some cool stuff with, with uh, shaping it up. So here, let's pull these up really fast so you can kind of see the differences. 
All good. There. Nope. Oh, where did where did we cut off? Here we go. So again, three. These are you know two light setups for the most part. Three different looks for the way that the light hits the subject, but all really really nice stuff. Really great easy setups for headshots. Uh, again, I love this look right here. It's it's the simplest of all of them. It's just one big soft box that you stand in front of. That's the three by four uh, 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 rectangle. Then right here, we use the white beauty dish. And again, you can tell that same kind of clamshell lighting setup between the soft box and the beauty dish. You can see the snap of the beauty dish. You can also see that some of that extra stray light from the beauty dish hits that silver and pops back up and, and adds a lot of fill here. If that's too much, you can do one of two things. You can lower the um, silver reflector. So if you only have a silver reflector, you could lower it down some, and that's going to let some of that light fall off. Or if you have like what I have, which is silver and white, you can flip over to the white side, and that's gonna be much more subtle on that fill from underneath. And then uh, with the soft box, you just kind of get this, you, a softbox doing what a softbox does with the Octa. So it's this nice, even light. It's got this beautiful round shape to it. Uh, and then, I mean, you can see here what I was talking about with the background. So on the beauty dish, it's a little bit lighter here in this corner. And it starts to gradiate out behind Kate. And it gets a little darker back here. Where that softbox is going to give you kind of that nice, even tone to the background. Which is something you may be looking for, may not be looking for. So... Again, two really, really easy headshot light setups. And you don't necessarily have to use these for headshots, but it's a great place for someone who wants to get into headshot lighting to start with minimal gear. So any other questions or are we good? I think we're good. Cool. Um, Mike was just saying, Mike Morris was saying that I think he was thinking there was a continuous light coming from somewhere else. And I'm wondering if he was thinking it was the studio. Or oh. the, um, so there's uh, there's no continuous lights coming from it. So I try to, uh, a lot of times people will hear me say, oh, I'm shooting at F8, ISO 100, 125 of a second. And that, I generally shoot at those settings so I don't have to turn the lights off and they don't affect the image. Yeah. Oh, you, you see, well, there's a camera in front of your head. Is that my camera? Oh, hilarious. <laughs> I was like, what? You can see the studio light. I was like, what is that? Yeah, so I mean, we, ha we obviously have constant lights on. But they're not, my camera settings are such that you don't, we don't have to worry about it um, affecting the image. So hopefully that helps out with that. So literally that light coming out. Uh, so you can see here, if you want to throw, like I, when I was, so here's the shot of Kate with the, um, the soft box. And here's the shot right before where I'm a dumb dumb. Oh, there is a touch of, I can see a touch of Kate in there with the studio light. But you can see for the most part, it's all the lights gone. That, that was me forgetting to turn the trigger on. Again, embarrassing myself oh, in front of everybody. So, um, is that a three foot OCF octa. Yeah, so the octa is a three foot OCF octa. Uh, you can do it obviously with an RFI, you know, the three foot octa. And then you don't have to go the three foot. Uh, you could stay with the two foot octa route and get relatively the same quality as far as softness that you're getting with the two foot, um, that you're getting with the two foot beauty dish, but with the soft box, probably with that, that feel of, the more even light on the background. So three foot is just kind of one of my favorite size uh, octaboxes. That's why I generally tend to go over to it, but the two foot would be really, really good. You could do this with the, uh, like if you're an A series user, you could do it with the click soft box and that would be really, really killer too. So anything else? Good, yeah. Cool. Good questions. Thanks, guys. So for everybody with questions or comments or just kind of having fun with us, bantering back and forth, we really, really appreciate that. Uh, with that being said, I hope you all have an awesome rest of your week. If you have any questions, do not do not hesitate to reach out and hit up any one of us at Profoto. Uh, you can DM me. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about anything. With that being said, have an awesome rest of your week. Peace out, everybody.